So the second part of chapter one is going to be talking about programming and problem solving. Uh, so when we're talking about the algorithm, uh, is a certain instruction that we want to follow. So if you look at your math problem, basically you're just following steps to solve anything. So wherever you are in your calculus class, if you're taking a calculus class or any other problems that you're solving, all we're learning through the school is learning those steps. So if we follow the steps, we are always gonna solve the problem. The issue is we forget one step and then we cannot solve the problem. So if I get the most complex calculus problem and I create certain steps and then I follow those steps, it can be, it can be solved. So I don't need to know calculus very well. All I need is you give me those steps and I just follow those steps and I'm gonna get the answer every single time. So most of the time when we cannot get the answer is because we are not following the steps correctly. So our job is to create those steps so we can write the programs. This is the example here. What we wanna do is we wanna determine how many times a name occurs in a list of names. So I'm gonna have a list of name. I'm gonna look up this name to see how many times it's gonna be in the list. So if I wanna do that, the first step is I gotta have the list. So first thing first, I have to get the list. Then I have to get the name that I wanna check. So these are gonna be my input to my program. I need a list, I need a name. Now I need to do a counting. But if I wanna do a counting, I wanna be sure that my counter starts at zero, it doesn't start. So C++, if you declare a variable, it does not automatically sets it to zero. It just picks up whatever is in the memory. And generally it's not gonna be a good number. So we're gonna set it to zero. Now, this is gonna be my processing. I'm gonna go through the list, as soon as I see the name that I'm looking for, I'm gonna add one to my counter. So I'm gonna to go to each name in the list. If it's gonna be the same as what I'm looking for, I'm gonna to add to the counter. So I'm gonna go through the whole list. When I finish with the list, I have a number. Now I can do display that number. So this is called algorithm. This is what we're gonna be doing. And then we're gonna program for each step of this. First, we're gonna create our steps step one through five in this case. And then we say, okay, how do we program these things? That's why we call this a design for. So we're gonna do a design and then we're gonna translate it to code. So program design is basically creating these steps and then uh, one of the, so we're gonna create those things and then we're gonna be writing code. So there's two sections over here, the design phase and the implementation phase. Design phase is we thinking what steps do we need to take and then implementation is to take those steps and write code for it. So my design is language independent. So my design, I can give it to somebody to write it in C++ or they can write it in different languages. It doesn't have to be the same language. It's not language dependent, but the implementation is the language dependent. So first thing first, before I start doing anything, I have to know what's coming into my program what is coming out of my program. So when we start doing our design document, that's the first thing we're gonna ask, what is coming to my program? What is going out of my program? You have to identify those things. And then we're gonna say if what's coming out of my program, how I'm gonna display this to the user. So if it's in the currency, maybe I wanna put two decimal point on it, I wanna put a dollar sign on it. If it's gonna be just printing a stuff, I wanna be sure there is spaces between my, result, so I don't have everything smooshed together. 
uh, and you know the lines how they gonna display. So that's what we're gonna be thinking: the input and the output. And I have the design document. We go over it next week. Now we're gonna be going through the process and the implementation phase is to translate the algorithm to programming language. We wanna separate those things. I know at the beginning, because the problems are so small, we might not wanna do the design document, but uh, there is no way that we can do a complex programming without the design document. So we will enforce design document in this class. Not everybody likes that. I didn't like it when I started writing program, but it has so much benefit that we're gonna separate our thinking and coding uh, that way we don't mix them up. So most of the programmers, they learn coding before uh, learning design. So we are comfortable to write code. Yes, it's gonna work for the small problems, but we wanna think about it before we go somewhere. We don't wanna start walking around and hopefully we're gonna get on top of the mountain. We gotta know how to get there. We need to know where is the path. We need to know when we go there, what do we need to have with us? We need some kind of a planning. We need some kind of a thinking. So if I sit my car and I keep driving around, hoping that I'm gonna to get to San Francisco, eh, it's not gonna happen. But if I'm sitting in my car, driving around, looking for a restaurant to eat, that might happen. So a small program is gonna work, but when it's more complex, it's not gonna work. But we need to practice that, we need to know that, and then you can do whatever you wanna do after that. So we're gonna, write our code, we're gonna compile it, we're gonna check the errors and the warnings, and then we're gonna run a sample data. So we have to put some data, sample data generally comes from the customer, and we wanna test these things. Uh, part of the software design is the test plan. How do we test these things? Because it is impossible that my program is running fine right now, and then we give it to the customer and it goes and they complain, hey, your program is not working because we did not test what they are testing in their place. So we're gonna have the problem definition. Uh, the way it comes into us in this class is your problem so that you're looking at. Uh, this, this book is not the best book of defining the problem correctly all the time, which is good because we have to think outside the box. Uh, but if I don't understand the problem, I cannot give you a good solution. I have to understand the problem. So you read the problem, and if you don't understand it, you have to ask questions because you cannot start solving problem if you don't understand what you do. In real life, we go and interview the customer. We come back, we look at it and say, wait a minute, there's some stuff missing because customers not necessarily tell us exactly what they want. They just assume that we know some stuff. And then we're gonna do our algorithm design. We take our algorithm design, we're gonna do our C++ uh, coding for it. We're gonna do the testing for it. And then we have the working program. Generally, we're gonna do testing of the program with the customer to be sure that's what they want. So, the original language of C++ was a C language that was created a long time ago. And it's such a powerful language that it still is up there, but it didn't have or didn't know anything about object oriented. That's why C++ came along. C++, we learn it, that means C plus one. Um, creators of these things were not very creative, just like myself. So, uh, the way that it came up with C and then C++ or Java, it's interesting stories behind them. So object-oriented design concept is if we can create a small modules that contains everything we want, data and 
functionalities of what we want, then we can take these modules and insert it in different places without knowing anything about program. So that's the concept of object-oriented program. So creating modules and people can take those modules and put it in different places and it's gonna work. So we have an engine and we have a transmission in a car, they put it together and they create this car with this engine and this transmission and they can put this engine in a truck or a sedan or something else and it's gonna work different model of the car. And I don't have to know the detail of it. All I know is I have a 2.0 engine. So that's the concept of it. Uh, we are not gonna get to that till chapter six. We're gonna spend some time to talk about those things when we get closer to that one. Software life cycle is how do we do a software? There is a difference between software engineer and programmer. The software engineer, thinks and knows a lot more that going around the software than just writing the code. And if people wanna be just a programmer, that's fine. But remember that <clears throat> we can find programmers cheaper somewhere else. Uh, so if you wanna get top dollars, you gotta go toward software engineering instead of just learning how to code. We need both of them, but you just gotta decide which one you wanna do. So we, get the problem statement. We're gonna go through it. We're gonna be sure that we understand what is in there. Uh, we analyze it and then we do a design on it. And then we're gonna write the code for it. So in real life, uh, before we get to the implementation, we don't have that many people in our team. So we have four or five people to uh, go over the specification. Be sure that we, want, we have everything we want. Then the design part of it, uh, we have generally two design, we call them uh, the, 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 the technical design is the one that we're gonna do it with the coders. And we have another design that's gonna be used by customer and CEOs, the people on the top. So we'll be doing the first one design. It's nothing about the actual language that we are using. We just wanna be sure what, what is the need to be done Generally in that part, we're gonna give them an estimate to the customer how much it's gonna to cost to do this, negotiation and all those kind of things. And then we go to the technical aspect of it. How do we get this design to this specific work environment that we have with the people that we have? So if C++ people are available, this time we're gonna write it in C++. If Java people are available, we're gonna do it in Java or we're gonna send it overseas and they're gonna write it in different language. That's the implementation. So we can have four or five people here, 300 people over here. That's the coders. And then of course, we're gonna have the maintenance and evolution of the system. So some companies don't make any money creating the software. They make most of their money on the maintenance of the software. They have a contract for quite a few years to do the maintenance for it. And when they find additional stuff, they can sell it to the customer to add to the software. So we can add this, we can add this. And after a while, we learn that maintaining the code is more expensive than creating a new code. Remember, some of these softwares are very, very expensive. Uh, the first software that I was, the huge software that I was involved with was the uh, airport security, which was way before 9-11 and all those things. And it was a huge project. And it took 95 software engineers to work together with the government to create those software. And it is gonna be very, very expensive. So first we wanna be sure it's stable and it's working fine. Second, we cannot just throw it away because it was very expensive. So somewhere down the road, somebody's gonna decide, he said, we are spending too much money to maintain this software. We can create the software much cheaper, then we're gonna throw it away and get the new software. It's not gonna happen like, you know, often, this is just huge software. But you think about it, we go to JPL2, and they, use, they were writing some codes for Mars uh, exploration back in the 70s. And now they're doing it now. The things that they, we know and we can do things today was totally different than what they, they, they have a spaceship still going, and they, it has a VHS on it. So the tape, you guys don't even know about it, 
that that's what is on it and it's so slow in communication, but still going. So those are the things that we decided. We throw it away or we keep maintaining. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here. This would be the